The recently discovered Dentaniosuchus was a massive reptilian predator, one that challenges most people's preconceptions of what the world was like after the demise of the non-avian dinosaurs. Although it looked like something from the Mesozoic era, Dentaniosuchus lived a mere 40 million years ago, during the Age of Mammals. Dentaniosuchus means frightful crocodile, a fitting name since it was larger than any terrestrial mammalian predator before or since. The only terrestrial Cenozoic predator of comparable size was the fellow reptile Borinosuchus, who was previously considered the largest terrestrial carnivore of the entire Cenozoic era. Now, they share the title. Dantaniosuchus and Borinosuchus both belonged to an obscure but fascinating clade of reptiles called Sebecosuchia. The branch of Sebecosuchia these two giants were a part of, Sebecidae, included some of the top predators of Cenozoic South America, Europe, and possibly Africa. The closest relatives of the Sebecids were the Baurusuchids, who were medium-sized predators from the southern continents during the end of the Cretaceous period. Their closest living relatives are the crocodilians, and Sebecosuchians belong to the larger clade Crocodilomorpha. However, unlike some other terrestrial crocodilomorphs, such as the contemporary Boverosuchus, Dantaniosuchus did not have a semi-aquatic ancestor. The Sebecosuchians were instead the last of the Nodosuchians, a once diverse clade of fully terrestrial crocodilomorphs. Even though Dantaniosuchus is a recent discovery, the holotype was excavated in 1931. Hailing from southern France, the bone is a mandibular symphysis, the tip of the lower snout. New Dantaniosuchus fossils were found in France in 1997, including what might have been a nearly complete skull. Unfortunately, it was heavily damaged during excavation, and not much besides the lower jaw, premaxilla, and the outline of the top of the skull remains. The description of these new fossils was finally published in April of 2023. Beforehand, the older Dentaniosuchus holotype had been assigned to the Sebecosuchian Iberosuchus, and the implications of its far greater size had been unappreciated. The once complete Dentaniosuchus skull is nearly one meter long. A key difference between it and those of crocodilians is that, like the predatory theropods, it was much taller. Crocodilians have evolved flatter skulls since they are more hydrodynamic and create a lower profile when they are preparing to ambush prey from the water. Dantaniosuchus' taller skull made it more resilient and allowed it to support additional jaw muscles. Its nostrils were also different from those of its amphibious relatives, being at the end of its rounded snout and facing forwards. Another difference between Dantaniosuchus and crocodilians is their teeth. Crocodilians have straight, conical teeth ideal for grabbing and holding onto their prey, while Sebecosuchians had compressed, recurved, dagger-like teeth reminiscent of those of the theropod dinosaurs. Dantaniosuchus' teeth are robust compared to other Sebecosuchians, but they are still slightly compressed on the sides. Like other Sebecids, it had a long tooth row, as opposed to the teeth of the closely related Baurusuchids, which were restricted to the front of the mouth. This giant land croc also had a large notch between its maxilla and premaxilla. It is suspected that, like many other crocodilomorphs, it accommodated an enlarged tooth in the lower jaw, but this cannot be confirmed since most of the corresponding tooth is missing. Dentaniosuchus's prefrontal bones jutted out above the eyes, creating a distinctive ridge. Another notable feature of the skull, although it would not have been visible in life, was its mandibular fenestra, an opening in the lower jaw. This opening was typical of crocodilians, dinosaurs, and other archosaurs, but Dantaniosuchus's mandibular fenestra was shaped like a boomerang. Besides the no longer complete skull, the rest of the Dantaniosuchus fossils consist of a humerus, ischium, a single vertebra, and four osteoderms. Reconstructing what the rest of its body looked like is difficult since a complete Sebecid skeleton has yet to be found. However, the reconstruction of Dentaniosuchus made in the paper itself doesn't match the anatomy of any other Sebecids or anything else, but this better reconstruction by Armin Reindel uses the namesake Sebecid Sebecus and the Baurusuchid Stratiotosuchus to fill in the gaps of Dentaniosuchus' anatomy. Most Nodosuchians had long, straight legs similar to those of dinosaurs and mammals, 
which allowed them to move much more efficiently on land than crocodilians are capable of. Although Dantaniosuchus' humerus largely conforms to those of other Notosuchians, it was particularly robust, with numerous muscle insertion sites. This would have allowed the gigantic land croc to quickly run down and overpower its prey in spite of its bulk. Dentaniosuchus's ischium, a type of hip bone, also had a complex series of muscle and tendon insertion sites. It differs substantially, not just from those of other Sebekids, but all other Notosuchians, likely as a result of the evolutionary pressure to support its greater body size. Like crocodilians, Dentaniosuchus had osteoderms, bony structures which grew within its skin. The handful of Dentaniosuchus osteoderms which have been found come in two types, one which is wide and another which is narrow. Both varieties have a crest. It is unclear where they were on its body, and no other Sebekid osteoderms have been found in articulation either. Their close relatives, the Baurusuchids, had fewer osteoderms than the majority of other crocodilomorphs, so the same may have been true of the later Sebekids. In any event, unlike their portrayal in this image, Dantaniosuchus' osteoderms would not have looked like those of crocodilians. A recent study found that Notosuchian osteoderms were covered by a leathery layer of skin similar to that of soft-shelled turtles, which would have increased their flexibility. Although it was clearly a massive animal, without a complete skeleton, it is unclear just how large Dantaniosuchus was. Based on comparisons to the Baurusuchid Stratiotosuchus, the similarly sized Barinosuchus has been estimated to have been 6 meters long and to have had a weight of 1600 kilograms. This is about the same size as the modern black rhino and the theropod dinosaurs Allosaurus and Eutyrannus. The Dantaniosuchus individual known from postcranial remains, reconstructed here by Armin Reindel, is a bit smaller than the largest Barinosuchus specimen but the less complete Dantaniosuchus holotype is actually a bit bigger than corresponding fossils of Barinosuchus. However, given the individual variation present within modern species of crocodilians, neither Dantaniosuchus or Barinosuchus are considered larger than the other. Still, sharing the title of largest terrestrial predator since the non-avian dinosaurs is a very impressive feat. The only Sebekosuchian of comparable size was Rezan Androgobe, a dinosaur killer who lived in Madagascar during the Middle Jurassic. Although such dinosaurs were long gone, the giant Sebekids evolved during the Middle Eocene, when mammals were just starting to become massive. Likely prey of Dantaniosuchus included the taper-like herbivore Lafiodon lautracensi, who is estimated to have weighed over two tons. The paper which described Dantaniosuchus suggested both it and Barinosuchus were a mere 3 to 4 meters long significantly smaller than has usually been accepted. There have been cases where the sizes of extinct crocodilomorphs were initially overestimated. For instance, the gavialid Ramphosuchus was once estimated to have been a staggering 18 meters long, but is now thought to have only been 10 meters long. It is also true that large predators sometimes have proportionally larger skulls than their smaller relatives, so it makes sense that Dantaniosuchus was not quite as large as a scaled-up Stratiotosuchus. However, the estimate of 3 to 4 meters doesn't seem to have been based on Dantaniosuchus's meager postcranial material. Indeed, not only did the paper not provide any evidence to support this drastically lower estimate, but it is questionable whether it was even biologically possible. The lower estimate of 3 meters is about the size of Sebekids with skulls less than half the length of Dantaniosuchus's. This might make some sense if the skull was highly elongated, like those of Spinosaurids, but this does not seem to be the case for Dantaniosuchus, and is certainly not true of Barinosuchus. Likewise, the Dantaniosuchus postcranial material is far larger than that of Sebekids in the 3 meter range. Furthermore, a total length of 3 meters would require their meter long skulls to be a ludicrous 50% of the length of the rest of their bodies. The upper estimate of 4 meters still beggars belief since even the famously huge heads of the Triassic erythrosuchids were not so disproportionate to their bodies. A length of 6 meters is an exceptional size for a Cenozoic carnivore, but that is no reason to assume it was instead even more extreme than the bobble-headed erythrosuchids. Indeed, estimating its size from a Baurusuchid is fairly conservative. The theropod dinosaur Despletosaurus also had a robust meter-long skull, and it was 8 to 9 meters long. With all of this taken into account, 
the previous estimate of 6 meters is a lot more reasonable than 4, let alone 3. Two other Sebecids have been found in Cenozoic Europe, Bergesuchus and the previously mentioned Iberosuchus. The phylogenetic analysis in the paper which described Dentaniosuchus did not find it to be closely related to these species nor to Barinosuchus. Instead, it was found to be the earliest diverging Sebecid. Given the incomplete nature of Dentaniosuchus and its relatives, these results are only tentative, but if true, then it may have had similarities to the Baurusuchids that were lost in more derived Sebecids. It was once assumed that Sebecidae first evolved in South America, which is where fossils of them and their closest relatives are the most common. However, the discovery of Dantaniosuchus has brought about the suggestion that they may have originally evolved in Europe. Supporting this hypothesis, the oldest unambiguous Sebecid, Ogresuchus, lived there, not in South America. South America was geographically isolated from the rest of the world throughout most of the Cenozoic era, but Ogresuchus dates to the late Cretaceous, a time when Europe was home to animals otherwise restricted to either the northern or southern continents. In the case of the Sebecids, Africa may have been able to serve as a bridge between Europe and South America. Although fragmentary, there are fossils of an African Cenozoic Sebecosuchian named Arimosuchus. Alternatively, Sebecidae could have simply originated in Africa, and from there independently spread to Europe and South America. Proving this hypothesis will be difficult due to the current rarity of African fossils dating to the end of the Cretaceous period. Dentaniosuchus may have been the deadliest predator in Europe since the dinosaurs, but it seems to have also been the last European Sebecid. After the Bartonian Age and the start of the late Eocene, mammals finally took over as the top predators of the continent. Dentaniosuchus' extinction has been linked to a period of global cooling during the Middle Eocene, a time host to a drastic reduction in crocodilomorph diversity. Although this period of climate change was devastating for many of the contemporary mammals, large reptiles like the Notosuchians were particularly vulnerable. They had ectothermic metabolisms, and just as they had thrived in the warm climates of the Paleocene and early Eocene, they were unsuited for the cooler environments which replaced them. Sebecids continued to thrive in South America, which remained warm due to its proximity to the equator. Although Barinosuchus evolved around the same time as Dentaniosuchus, it persisted until 12 million years ago, during the Middle Miocene. While Dantaniosuchus seems to have been the last of the European Sebecids, as one of the largest terrestrial predators in the last 66 million years, it ensured their story ended on a high note. Many reptiles thrived during the early Cenozoic, but like Barinosuchus, Dantaniosuchus managed to outdo the mammals after they had already replaced the dinosaurs. With the discovery of these two remarkable reptiles, the age of mammals will never be looked at the same way again. Thank you for watching, and a thank you to the Mandalorian for narrating this video. If you enjoyed it, please remember to hit the like button, and subscribe if you'd like to see more. Finally, be sure to have a great day.